uh, what it's called is six smart green products that also improve your client's project accessibility. And the speaker was, her name was Rosemary Rossetti. And she has a, uh, she, she's a P, she has a PhD. Her, her expertise actually isn't or wasn't in uh, building or design or architecture, but uh, what actually what actually happened to her was uh, when she, I think she was in her twenties. Her and her her husband, they had been married for like a year or two, and they were hiking on this trail in Ohio, and a tree actually fell on top of her, and she actually became like paralyzed from the waist down. And so she was in a, she's now like in a wheelchair. But after that happened, like this was the house on this slide that her and her hus husband had owned. I don't know if you can see my cursor, but I'm putting it over like this area right here is where it's like some sort of wheelchair elevator thing that she oh, yeah, had yeah, in front of her house so that she could get into the, up into the like to the front door from the steps so like you can see they had to have a wheelchair just for her to get into the house i mean like a like a little wheelchair elevator just to get into her house and so so uh so it says to a home that intensifies my disability 50 percent of my home is inaccessible to me so pretty much like what happened was her and her husband found that, that like things were just like not good because she wasn't able to like do a lot of things that she used to be able to do in her house. Um, so there's this concept of universal design. Do, do, are you familiar with what universal design is? Um, a brief understanding really just designed for everyone. Yes, but yes. Asked, yeah, yeah, not, that, not that's, super familiar. That's pretty much what it is. Uh, to be honest, I'm not super familiar with it either, but. I mean, the word universals, it's pretty much like to come up with a design that it's not really customized, but it's like, like techniques of doing things and techniques of designing that are mainstream so that when you do design a house, even for people that aren't, you know, in wheelchairs, that if something did happen to them 10 years from now, like their house, because of the way it was designed, it's actually still suitable for them in a wheelchair. So it's kind of like universal in the sense that it's like a good home for someone in a wheelchair, a good home for someone that's like older, someone who's younger, someone who's tall, someone who's short. So it's kind of universal in the sense that it takes into considerations like a large like variety of people. Um, that makes sense. Yeah, and so this is actually her website. You can go to UDLL, and this is the house. The, the first house, I mean, the house in the last picture was her old house. This is her new house. So one thing you can kind of see here, it's can't really tell, but that sort of front, like, entryway where my cursor is, that's like where you pull your car up, and you can get out of your car there, or you can park your car there and then, you know, go into the front, front entry. But... You can see it's kind of even easy. Like if you were to get out of your house, you just get out of the front door and walk right into the, you know, I mean, get out of your car door and you, you know, you're at your front door. So you kind of see it, you see, it's similar to like what you see at a hotel sort of. Yeah. So this is the house that she upgraded to, like she designed and, and moved into this house. Yeah. So her and her husband like started working on the design. I believe neither one of them had any like experience, but she, she has a PhD. So she's, probably like pretty good at learning and now what she does is she like goes around and she speaks uh so and she even works with designers and architects on like um she wrote a book on like how to like design houses so she, she's not necessarily like in the field but she's she has a lot to say about how you can you know build a house and design a house like after going through this project so they started designing I think in like 2006 and the project finished like 2015 or 2016. So it was about a 10 year project. Um, 
So her, the house that they built, like they were considering like um, green building, like being green certified. And then also they, they considered uh, LEAD, which is leadership in energy and environmental design. So it was those things along with uh, universal design. Um, she brought up uh, Ron Mace, who he kind of coined the phrase universal design the design of products and environments to be usable by all people to the greatest extent possible without the need for adaptation or specialized design. Um, this is kind of going more into what universal design is, but regardless of level or ability or disability, the design embraces diversity, inclusion, flexibility, and equality. Many accessible and adaptable features are universally usable. And then uh, a transparent design approach. And then uh, she also pointed out that it's not, this isn't ADA, like there's no, it's kind of, now I'm sure a lot of universal design like concepts actually are ADA, you know, they would comply with ADA compliance, but it's not, this isn't ADA laws. It's just kind of like a way of a conceptual way of designing. Got it. Cool. That makes sense. Um, so uh, it provides for added safety. So she she mentioned these things: uh, grab bars, enhanced lighting. So you know it could be someone that doesn't have the best like eyesight. Uh, no steps at entrances. Um, you know, so it. it so if you don't have a step, it's like, it's accessible for people in wheelchairs, but then it's also usable for people that aren't in wheelchairs. You know, it's, you just don't have to step up something or step down. And then also low threshold. So, you know, even at the doorways, the, the threshold, try to keep those down to a minimum. Uh, curbless showers. And these are just things that she pointed out in her project an anti scold device and showers. So, and you, and you know, like if you've done ADA, like curbless showers is something that, that uh, is great right. with ADA. Um, visibility and international movement to change home construction practices. Um, so at least one zero step entrance. So that's like when going into the house, like there being one entrance in the house that doesn't have a step. So it doesn't necessarily, not, not every entrance has to be like, you know, a flat transition into the house, but at, le at least to have one. Then all main floor doors with at least 32 inch clearance. Um, at least a half bathroom uh, with wheelchair accessible on the main floor. Um, and this was for her particular project. So uh, the house that she built, like, I guess for LEED, they didn't qualify for, I think it was for LEED, they didn't get any LEED points. And she actually made some arguments with like, I guess the board of LEED to actually add two points to their uh, two points for universal design and visit, sorry, visitability features in 2008. And so I think LEED now actually like uh, has added that to their uh, sort of criteria. They've added um, these universal design concepts because she actually like pushed LEED to, to add it to it. So. Um, and so this is kind of the title of the of the her presentation, but it's six products with green and universal design features. So the six products that she mentions are doors, flooring, toilets, windows, shower heads, and hand shower, and then landscape pavers. And so we'll go through we'll go through those right now. So the doors, like, and th this was her actual house. So like, she says multiple door people. So like. I couldn't actually see where the peepholes were, but they did this design where they had these circles. Do you see these circles on here? And I think there's a peephole right here, but pretty much they made it so that there's a peephole like 
where her husband could see through the people. And then they also made a peephole like so that she could see, I think midway through the door. Um, so that was one thing is like, you know, they make the door, but it's, it's not, there's not just a people for just like someone who can stand up and look through it at, you know, five foot six height. Um, the other thing that they did with this particular door was they had a low threshold. So, you know, the transition from getting in to get into the house was, is easier when the threshold lowers, especially with a wheelchair. And I mean, even with, without a wheelchair, it's like, it's harder to trip on it. Uh, the lever, the hand, door handle is a lever. It's not like a circular knob. So that's easier for people, not just, you know, I don't, I don't know if it's more or less easier for people in a wheelchair, but it's, it's easier for people as you get older, you know, with arthritis, it's easier to open and close a door with, with a lever handle. And then you yeah, have, that makes, that makes sense. Yeah. And I, I, I didn't know why that was so popular. Actually recently we did a house where, where like, cause I kind of like circular handles cause I feel like they've gotten out of style, but, but, uh, yeah, it seems like a lot of people are doing lever handles now, and it wouldn't surprise me if that's one of the reasons why, actually. And then you, and for this particular door, she had a 36-inch wide door, so, you know, you can fit a wheelchair through it. You know, let's say, you know, someone weighs a lot or they're heavier, you know, that someone who's skinny and someone who's not skinny can both get through a 36-inch wide door. So, you know, it's, it's, it's universal for all types of people. And then uh, when it comes to green, it was a fiberglass insulated door. So I had some, some energy. It was an energy star door. So it, it was efficient when it comes to heat transfer. So that, that was the door. A, a, a thing that she pointed out with, was with handles. Um, the, and I, I mentioned this in the last slide, but lever style handles are easier for older people to open and close. And so that's sort of like a universal design. So people without arthritis and people with arthritis, both of them can open them. Uh, this 36 inch wide. Uh, this is their front door. I don't know if all the doors in her house were like this, but I've been in homes where the, all the doorways are large. And it is kind of nice too, because or even though I don't need it, like if you ever want to move furniture or anything, it's really easy to get things in and out of the doorways. Uh, the, the next thing was the hardwood flooring, uh, universal design flooring options, hardwood, uh, porcelain, tile, cork, vinyl, marmoleum, which is a linoleum. And she, she was saying all of these are good options, like hardwood floor, porcelain tile is good. Uh, cork and vinyl and marmoleum are good for uh, for wheelchairs. Um, she was saying carpet's not as good, so it's not it's not considered as universal design unless it's like a a low has a low uh, pile with a thin pad underneath it. So I don't know if that's why people have been moving away from carpet, but hardwood definitely. Hardwood and tile seem to be, and actually vinyl seem to be more popular nowadays. Um, uh, green flooring options, carpet made from recycled materials. So this is kind of the, the more, not as much of the universal design aspect of it, but the green, the green aspect of it. Uh, carpet you can get from recycled materials. Uh, or made from wool. Um, marmoleum is made from linseed oil. And then cork made from bark or cork oak. Uh, hardwood flooring. Uh, you know, bamboo or eucalyptus, fast growing, and then also harvested from sustainable forests. So that would be considered green. And in, in her particular project, she put this uh, underneath her hardwood floor, they put this recycled rubber under the hardwood floor in which uh, one, it was recycled, so it was, it was green. And two, um, I don't remember specifically what she, 
she had mentioned something besides it just being quieter and softer, but there was something a lot of people commented on the feel, how it how it had like a maybe soft was the word, like a softer feel to it. So it's kind of interesting. Um putting that that recycle that rubber kind of rubber underneath the hardwood floor. Um, and this, yeah, you know, I've, I've installed like rubber and cork under floors before and it does, it does have a really nice feel to it because you can tell the difference between doing that and just going straight on plywood or something like that. It's, it's, it's pretty nice. So it's, it's interesting that that's part of this. Okay. So Nick, what, what do you, what's your position? Are you a, an architect or are you a construction or? I am an architect, but I used to be a design builder. So I used to do remodels um on my own with a buddy's contractor license so I used to do install and building and now just do design um, okay. okay yeah because i decided to focus a few years ago on getting that architecture license so you kind of have to like really dive on that path okay I was just but curious. then i still do all my own remodel projects because i can't i can't help myself yeah yeah um, so here you have a 36 inch wide door, the opening still large. And then also you have this pocket door. I don't recall if she commented on the pocket door being easier or, or harder. I would think it would kind of be a little bit nice if you're in a wheelchair because you don't have to like bump the door like to get through. So. But she also, she, she did mention too, this level floor transition, which I like to install anyway on most of our projects, but you know, where the hardwood down here and the tile, there's a, there's like, there's no transition piece or something because the floor, you know, you had to, the tile's not raised higher than the hardwood floor. So you see, you have a smooth transition here and a smooth transition here. Um, yeah, so I think it looks nicer, but it's also from a accessibility like perspective. It's it's good for you know when you're in a wheelchair, and you also can't trip on it too. So the older people get you know sometimes you see transition. There's like a two inch transit or not two inches, but I've seen like inch to like inch and a half transitions some sometimes, and so it can be a tripping hazard. Uh, I forget why she put this slide in here. <laughs> um, but th this is the toilet. And I think it had to do with the height. So in her particular situation, she wanted a toilet that, that was, I think in this case, it was 17 inches. And so because her wheelchair, she wanted to be able to access the, you know, the toilet from the wheelchair and it not be hard to get onto the toilet. Um, and then you can see, you know, she has a grab bar here to help her like get on and off the toilet. So yeah, so here you have comfort height, 17 inches to 19 inches from the floor. Uh, install center of toilet ring, 18 inches from the sidewall. She mentioned that because I believe I don't think it needs to be 18 inches. I think the code is like 15 inches. It might be 16 inches, but she was saying because of grab bars, you know, if you have a grab bar that pops off the wall three inches or whatnot, it's nice to have the toilet even a little bit further away from the grab bar. Whereas if the Yeah, if the that makes sense because code's code's 15, and that's probably just too close. Yeah, so if you had a grab bar there, it's like kind of like your elbow is almost hitting it when you're, you know, so, so it was interesting to hear the 18 inches. And then she has a dual flush. And then, you know, the green aspect of it is the low water use, 1.1 to 1.28 gallons per flush. A lot of this is stuff that, you know, you probably already know, especially us being in California. She's from Ohio, so their codes probably aren't as, I guess you could call it green. I mean, the other things right, that she right. didn't really, What's that? I was just saying, right, right, yeah, like all the, like all of our toilets have to be low flow and the shower heads and all the, you know. All, yeah. You know. Whereas like in Ohio, it might have been like, oh, we're doing something like special. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
So, but I mean, and the, even the toilet that she showed, like, there wasn't really anything too special. I mean, this was, I, I'm guessing they installed it back in like 2012, whereas like nowadays you have toilets where if you even like step in the room, the toilet opens, you know, you can probably talk to it. You know what I'm saying? So like there's things that now are- Oh yeah, the, um, the event last night at Rubenstein's, they have one of these NX1 toilets in the showroom that is like functioning. You can go in and use it. And yeah, when you, when you walk in the room, it opens up and greets you. And, you know, it's got yeah. all these different modes, you know, warms you up, all these different things. It's pretty cool. It's also $10,000. Yeah, and, and it's like one of those things where you- you walk away and it flushes on its own. So it's like censored. Yeah, self-cleaning. So even those things are like a lot more like, I would say, you more universal, you know, universal design than the one she showed. But this is a little, I think she built her house with like, she finished it like five years ago, so. And then for the windows, she mentioned casement windows. So universal design, easy to use crank handle, lock is reachable from the seated position. So if you notice here, the lock on the right side of the window, how it's, how it's lower, it's not like in the middle of the window. So it's at, a, it's at a level where like someone in a wheelchair could, could still lock it. And then, you know, if you're not in a wheelchair, you can still lock it too. And then, uh, you know, she mentions that cranks, Cranks are a lot easier for like many people to open and close a window rather than, you know, a, a sliding window or a uh, a hung window. So, you know, it, I mean, older hung windows sometimes are really hard to open and close. But so uh, casement windows was was a, is part of universal design, and then the green aspect of it is low E coating. Argon gas, double pane, Energy Star, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Uh, this is just a, uh, you know, like a little more science, science uh, based slide, but just shows that, you know, the, the first pane here blocks the UV radiation. Uh, the solar heat gets kicked out, gets reflected out. I think from the, the uh, the solar heat absorbed by low E2 coating on, on the second surface. So this, this brown piece here is the coating that, that blocks the solar heat or absorbs the solar heat. Um, and then, uh, but then the visible light gets through and then the opposite effect happens on the inside with this paint. Uh, energy efficient windows, windows and doors with uh, windows and doors with windows. The U factor measures how well a window keeps heat inside. So that's a, and, and the lower number, the better. And then solar heat going coefficient is uh, solar radiation emitted through a window. So, and it's also the same as the lower, the better. And I'm sure you're familiar with this in California and, and this area has like probably more advanced code than the rest of the country, so. Yeah, and all the, most of our design is really modern. So we are always trying to fight to get the, you know, cause we basically do these big glass boxes and <clears throat> it's always a tricky, tricky problem. Are you normally over the U factor or? What's that? Do you normally have to like make up for it in some other way? Yeah, so we work with our, we have a Title 24 energy consultant that runs the, runs the, um, analysis for us and usually like the whole house is glass so we have to make up for it in other places like you know doing spray foam insulation over insulating the roof over insulating the floor doing whole house fans um doing like verifications on all of our systems so that a person comes out and like checks that all the insulation was done properly and all that and that helps you get credit back all these kinds of things it's, it's a whole it's a whole little puzzle yeah. Okay. So you're, you're familiar with this, but. Yeah, but it's cool. To see, it's interesting to see that it's part of universal design. Yeah. Yeah. 
So then you have uh, shower features. You have grab bars in the shower, adjustable height for your shower head with a six foot hose. So, you know, obviously like if it's adjustable, that means it can be used for someone who's short or someone who's taller. Um, lever handle faucet. So that, again, that's kind of the same thing as for the lever doors, you know, it's, it's a little bit easier to turn. Um, and then preset temperature controls. So that can be helpful in the sense that, you know, so here, I think this is the temperature control here. And you, you know, you preset it, you say, okay, this is where I want it. And so that the temperature is always gonna be at that same temperature. Um, so it's a little safer once you kind of know, okay, this is the heat that I want the water to be at. It stays that way anytime you use the shower. And then shelves for soap and shampoo. Um, I don't see those in this picture unless it's, what those yellow boxes are right there, but um, you know, having the shelves located in a, an area that's that's accessible to to uh, you know to anyone that would want to use the shower, and then um, ergon ergonomic ergonomic shower chair, and that's she was speaking there. You can see also that here's the grab bar, but. The shower chair here is like this little curve here, makes it kind of easier, a lot easier for someone that's like in a wheelchair to use rather than it being like a straight shot here. Oh, um, interesting. I, really, I never really realized why that was, why that curve was in some places. Yeah, I didn't either. So, but it kind of makes sense when you're sitting there and you need to like reach down somewhere. It's kind of like, it gives you that extra yeah, like right. three or four inches. So it makes sense. Um, and then she mentioned, you know, less than two gallons per water per minute, which, you know, here in California, we're familiar with low flow fixtures. So, uh, yep. this was like her husband's, like, so they had, they had the last slide was like her spot. And then this, this was her on the other side of the shower was her husband's shower head. So like, you know. If you're fortunate enough to have a big enough shower to do that, you know what I'm saying? You, you, the bigger the house can be, the more and the more money you have, the more uh, universal you can make yeah. the house. <laughs> right, right. Super universal. Yeah. And then for landscaping pavers, she mentioned a couple things. This wasn't really part of it, but she mentioned the overhangs of the house. If you notice, these, which I thought was kind of cool, but the overhangs are, this is probably more of an energy thing, but they're actually six feet. I think she said they were six feet, but yeah, these overhangs are huge. So like it blocks a lot of the sunlight, which I thought was kind of cool. That's kind of a different topic, but anyway. But yeah, so these pavers, they were green in the sense that they're permeable and they're, they're from recycled materials. Um, and then the universal design is that uh, they have like a resistant static coefficient, uh, you know, so you can't slip, you don't slip as much on these particular types of pavers. And so the, they specifically chose these pavers so that you wouldn't slip on them. Um, with her being in a wheelchair and then also with, uh, you know, she wanted them, they're, 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 it was also a green product so that they're permeable in the sense that water can get through it and, and soak through the, uh, get through the pavers. And then uh, they're, they were also made from recycled material. I mean, something you can kind of see here too in this picture it's just the, like, you look here, I think there's a little bit of a step here going up there, but it seems like it's pretty small. It might be like an inch or two. So, and I think they, I don't think you can see in this picture, but when, when you go around this area, I think here there was like a straight shot into the house, like on with like either a ramp or it was just a flat uh, from the pavers in, onto the house. Uh, from the back side of the house. Um, 
And then she had a, she talked about cost for a little bit. She said value versus cost, green plus universal design. Price comparison on green plus universal design features. She mentioned like long-term investment. So for instance, like, and I don't know if you ever actually get your money back, but you know, if you have low flow fixtures, you're not using as much water. So like there are some fixtures like were made, you know, way back when that when you flush a toilet, it might use two, like, you know, three or four gallons of water, which is big waste of water. So there's savings, you know, for using low flow, uh, even though they're more expensive on the front end, they're less expensive on the back end, you know, same right, with, right. Like, same with like uh, windows and, you know, things being more efficient, you don't have to use the heat as much. Now, I don't know how much savings it is in the long run. And she didn't really say either, but I mean, there's obviously some sort of like savings that you get. I don't know if you ever actually get it back, but in some cases, I think you would. I, I would think that like you were kind of saying, if you have like a whole house fan and you have like really good, ins a really well insulated house, you know, you might not have to use your, I mean, if you bought an AC too, but you might not really have to use it too much in the summer, maybe like once in California or twice, maybe. And even then it may be only for a couple hours during the day, then you turn the whole house fan on. Um, uh, price comparison of green plus universal design. Benefits to the occupants in the long run, provides independence, safety, access, comfort, convenience, ease of use, peace of mind, quality of life. And I mean, I think it's a lot harder for us to see because we're not handicapped. So, it's kind of interesting seeing someone who is handicapped and their perspective and how, you know, like right. peace of mind. Especially like in residential. Of, what's that? I said, I said, especially in just residential, because it's, it's just for one person, it's different than like the ADA for a commercial building, right? It's just like, what is, yeah, yeah you know? And I mean, think about like, if you were in a wheelchair and you were trying, like she had mentioned her kitchen cabinets, how like, they were lower in certain areas. Like she designed the cabinet so that like most stuff that she needed was like on the, you know, weren't in the upper cabinets. So it's just one of those things that like, like after she got, you know, the tree fell on her and she got paralyzed from the waist down. I can see how you go into your house and you can't do anything on your own. You know, you kind of have to like, you're so dependent on other people. So I can see how like peace of mind is like, you just like, I, it's something that I don't really think about, you know, or like whether I use a lever handle or, or a circular doorknob, like to me, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. I can see how someone are, you know, trying to get into a shower, or like, you know, even the temperature control, like leaving the temperature in one area. Well, like, like I'll turn my shower on and I'll like put my hand through it and then I'll like wait a minute and wait until it gets to the right temperature and then I'll adjust it and I'll, I'll walk to the sink and do something else. So it's a lot easier for me, you know what I mean? Whereas like, I can see how things coming from like that perspective, how there's a lot of things, there's a lot of thought that she put into like each room when she was designing. So it, it's kind of, it's sort of interesting like, hearing her perspective and like, uh, you know, her story, she, so I, I would recommend going and watching it. So like, that's kind of what, what uh, stoked the whole thing is her getting paralyzed and then realizing mm -hmm. that the house that she was living in, like she couldn't. Oh, really, so she has like an interview in the webinar. Yeah. So she actually like in the webinar, she actually like, she's the one, she pretty much goes through the slides I just went through and she talks about her house and like, cool. Okay, she, cool. Yeah. She talks a little bit about her story too. And I mean, I'm not, she's pretty involved now. I think she goes around the country and speaks about these things. So, you know, and she consults with architects and, and uh, designers. So she's sort of now she's involved in the construction. Cause I think that she saw like, well, there's like a big need for this sort of thing. I mean, I think if she lived in California, like she wouldn't see it as much, but like, 
I can see it in other parts of the country that, that aren't as like, I guess, green yeah. or like ADA. Like, I think we're a little bit more advanced when it comes to these types of things than, than most areas in the country. But uh, yeah, and I didn't, I don't think I put her book. Yeah, I didn't put her book just because it was kind of like a Sally type things. But if you watch the webinar, now, when I went to watch the webinar, and I'm going to talk to Plamena, who works at, uh, who's the Nari National, like, education. She's one of the, like, people in charge at the national level. Because I wasn't able to actually open up the webinar. I actually had to watch it on YouTube. And so that's how you get your, like, CEUs in your credits from watching those webinars on on uh, Nari. So if you're certified, like, okay. if you're like a certified remodeler or a certified designer through Nari, you have to update your credits like throughout the year. And so, or you have to have like certain number of like educational like units. And so at the end of these webinars, it'll give you like a certificate saying, I mean, I think you have to answer a couple questions, but then they give you a certificate and they, they say, okay, congratulations. Like you've earned like this many I think this particular one was two, would give you two units. So that's why, like, what we try to do is have people watch that prior to coming to this. And then this meeting will be more of like a discussion 